Hello everyone, this is Michelle at michellesizemore.com. Today you'll learn how to make this page using a citrus slice border maker cartridge. And you'll notice that this doesn't look like citrus slices at all, okay? Because I used a hack to give it a completely different look. Normally that border cartridge looks like this. And here's a sample of it the way you would normally use it. It does look like little slices of oranges or lemons. Okay, but I'm gonna use a folding technique that makes it look different. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is cut my paper to size and then do the scallop blade on the top and bottom with my 12 inch trimmer. So I am going to cut half an inch off of this because that allows me to have a little bit of room for it to show um, what's behind it on the top and bottom. Make sure I have my straight blade in and I do, it's blue. Okay, I would save this because this would be a great little skinny border on something. Okay, so it's gonna be like this. So I want scallop on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna grab my scallop blade just flip up in the top of this by flipping that little thing that sticks down right there. When I put the scallop blade in here, I want the logo right here to face to my left. That's important with this blade only. All the other blades, it doesn't matter if it's facing left or right, it's gonna cut the same. But this one, you get one look, look out of it when you cut it, put the logo to your left and another look when you put it to your right, okay? So, open this up. And I, I just want to cut a little tiny bit off. So I'm going to just move this to the right-hand side of this dotted line, just a tad. And on the left-hand side, that's where your blade always comes down, okay? So my blade's going to come down here, and whatever's over here will get cut off. I just need to make sure there's enough room for when it cuts that scallop off that it's just right for the rest of the paper. So I lined it up to the right of that. Let me move it down to make sure you can see that. To the right of that right-hand side dotted line, and you just see a little sliver of this gray from the matte strip all the way down. So that's good. Now I'm going to just press down and cut, and you can see that you get this pretty little scallop wave. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now you're gonna also get this little piece that looks like this, that you can save and use for something else. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Put it just to the right of that right-hand side of the line. And honestly, I'm gonna open this because it helps me keep the whole paper straight. And make sure your foot is flipped up so that it makes this stay level all the way down. I love all the features of this trimmer. It's just great. So I'm gonna place this to the right hand side of that right hand side dotted line and show a little bit of this gray all the way down and make sure it looks pretty straight or straight. Okay, I'm good with that. Make sure it's straight all the way here. Just a little bit, there we go, I'm good with that. Okay, so now I'm going to cut and I'll have a scalloped side on the top and the bottom of this paper and I think that's really pretty, okay? Now, I'm gonna set this aside. I want to <clears throat> use a folding technique with this. So, I have to look at my notes here to remember how to do it. Yes, I wanna fold it down to the one inch mark. Um, so, what I need to do is score it with my 12 inch trimmer. We have a scoring blade. If you flip your trimmer over, all your extra blades store underneath here, and I love that. So the score blade doesn't happen to be here. And of course, isn't that great in the middle of my video? Give me just one second. Yep, here it is. I have it over here. So I'm gonna flip this open, take that out, put my score blade in, curvy side down always, and close it. So. I'm going to open my arm, make sure my foot is open, everything's level and steady. On one side, I want to put this at the one inch mark where all the, the tops of my little scallops line up with that 
grid line all the way down, okay? So I'm gonna make sure they line up and everything's straight at the top, okay? I'm good with that. Close my arm, hold it straight. Now I'm gonna score, I'm not gonna press really hard, but I am gonna give it a little bit of a firm push down and go back and forth five or six times. Don't press too hard on decorative paper because if you do, it could tear it. Cardstock, you can press harder, but I don't really use this on cardstock much. Well, I do when I make a card, but okay. So I think that's good. And you just wanna be able to see that there is a little indention there and there is. I'm gonna set this aside. Now I'm gonna fold this over. This is the side that's gonna show. So I want to fold it over this way on my score line for cutting purposes because I want to stick this down just a little bit with some repositionable tape runner to make sure it doesn't move on me, just a little bit. Remember, this is gonna be the back. So it's better to do it that way because sometimes if I were doing it on this side and I folded it this way and put my tape runner down, when I open it back up, it pulls a tiny bit of the paper off and it has little white spots. So that's why I wanna put my adhesive, since I'm gonna open it back up on the back. So fold it over toward the back and then we're gonna punch this with the border maker system. So this is the hack part of it. It's so fun. So I'm gonna put my citrus slice cartridge in. You wanna put it in this way with your little metal pieces sticking out. My tray is open. Now, see this folded part? I'm gonna press that down. I'm gonna add just a little bit more so it doesn't pull up on me. And I don't want much repositionable back here. It's just a temporary thing to keep it from flipping up. Now, here's the trick. You put this in and you line it up with this dark line right here, the furthest dark line to the right. So I'm gonna line it up there. Okay, that looks straight to me and close it. Now, we're gonna use this and cut the border. You make sure this fits inside here. Your notches fit together. That's how you know it's in the right spot. And you feel it plop together like this underneath. There's The grooves fit in the, the little sections to make it fit together like a puzzle underneath. Notches match up. There's a blue and a white notch. When I use this border maker system, I stand up um, and I kind of lean over to kind of put some weight into it. Not a lot, but it does help me because you need to give it a good firm push. Now, it's not just a tap. So I'm gonna push it, push it down and I can see it's cutting exactly like I want it to. This is what it's gonna look like. Let me put some paper underneath. It's gonna look kind of weird, but when you open it up, it's gonna be great, okay? Now I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna bring it up, plop it back down, my notches match up, cut, cut, or punch, I should say. And I've got one more punch and I'll be done. And when I open it up, it's gonna look pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the fold. Oh, and it, I love it. I love how this works, so see? you got this whole different look right here. So now I'm gonna flip this over, grab a piece of cardboard, because when I use my repositionable tape runner, I always do it on cardboard, so that when you use it on these little intricate pieces, it only sticks where it needs to stick on your paper, and then the excess comes off on what's behind it. And it's little clear dots, so you don't see things poking through your holes like you would if you used a regular tape runner, and it doesn't get wet and messy as if you were using a um, glue pen. I love this, this trimmer. So I'm gonna put the little dabs all the way down on the side and then little dabs kind of in the middle part of the design because the middle part is where it has the most to grab onto, okay? And then I want a little bit all around the edges you just put little dabs. You don't give it a big swoosh because if you do, you're gonna 
use way too much and need to buy another repositional tape runner way too soon. So it's all around the edges now. I got the solid, more solid parts of the design. Now I'm just gonna randomly put about four little dabs in three rows all the way across. Okay, now I'm gonna mount this onto the yellow. And y'all, this is a really pretty shade of yellow. It comes in the National Scrapbook Day cardstock pack. And this paper is from the National Scrapbook Day collection. So you can look at all of that on my website. I mean, it's current product now. If you're watching this video a while from now, it won't be, but um, you can always use this technique with other papers if when, when all of that sells out. Okay, so I wanna line this up on the left-hand side the best I can so I don't see any yellow sticking out. Rub my finger. Okay, and then gently start rubbing this way. It's really good to try to line it up on that left-hand side so you don't get yellow showing off on both sides. And I can see that I got it off just a tiny little bit over here. It's a little bit bigger, um, but I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna, well, let me redo it. This shows another good thing about this repositional tape runner. If you don't lay it right the first time, or the second time, or the third time, you can pick it up and move it around. So I'm going to try to line it up better this time. All the way down. And I think that's gonna be, goodness, I'm struggling on this bottom part here. Here we go. Now, I think, yes. I'm good with that now. Okay, rub it down. Be gentle right here when you rub so you don't bend your little pieces. Now, is that not the coolest thing that the punch normally does this and because I folded it and positioned it right and then opened it up, it does this. I love it. So then you would just add your pictures and your um, decorations. So I would add like a photo here, a photo here, and of course I have my little photos already pre-cut. Here we go, here they are. My sample photos. I just cut these out of cardstock because it's easier to show you with demos using cardstock instead of my trying to pick out photos and all that. I can go back and do photos later and save my pages that I use for demo. So you would position these, you know, kind of about like that. I know they're not perfectly straight yet. And then this is a piece of ruled paper we have this awesome ruled paper with creative memories and I just cut it to fit right here. And I'm gonna grab my trimmer. Okay. And I cut that to, I believe four and a half by two and a half. Um, so I'm gonna measure this. I'm gonna open this up and, met, well, I don't really need, I don't really need that, but anyway, four and a half, because it needs to be four and a half inches wide. Line it, line it up at the four and a half inch mark, make sure it's straight at the top, and it follows this grid line to be straight all the way down. I love how this trimmer gives you different ways to check to make sure it really is straight to double check yourself. So I'm gonna, oh, I need to take that out. I saw the score blade in there. Open that up, take it out, put my blue blade in, because this is the straight blade. Close it, and cut. And then I'm going to flip it this way and measure it at the two and a half inch mark right there. Make sure it's straight on that grid line too, straight at the top and cut. Now I have my little journal box. Okay, so let's mount everything down here. Show you how easy this is. And then also I'm going to use this sticker strip. Okay, grab my repositionable tape runner. We're almost done. Put it on every corner of the photo and then a couple of more little dabs there and place it. Try to get it straight. And do this one. You can see I don't use a lot of tape runner on this because I don't want to waste it. You don't need much. And when you get it positioned, you just rub it to stick it down. If it's not sticking very well, put another little dab under there. And these are just pulling up a little bit because I've used them with a lot of demos. Okay, so now I'm gonna put tape runner here. 
little dabs. Put this here. And then I'm gonna mount that little journal box that I just cut. It's kind of cool because this paper has a little design to it. So you can kind of follow the design to make sure everything looks straight. So that would be my journal box. And then I would take this sticker and add it right here. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna waste it. I love that little sticker. But you would put the sticker there and then you would write here with your Creative Memories pen. So this is the final look. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have fun using your border maker cartridges in different ways. Have a great day.